rank currently. Two. Uh, what role do you want to learn today? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Are you uploading it on YouTube, I'm assuming, or? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. How long have you been playing? Early season one. Okay, okay. What champions do you want to learn or do you know right now? Okay. 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 Um I'm gonna look at your room pages right now. See if they're good. Um, you already signed up for a lesson, right? It's already. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I have to. I'm just gonna check right now. But yeah, just making sure. Are you? Oh yeah, Michael. Okay, I see you. All right. Um. Okay. Going to. Runes. Okay, yeah, no problem, man, no problem. Um, so I'm assuming your AD carry page is room page number four? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, I can give you a Maokai page, I can give you other things later, but right now I'll, I'll just, one thing at a time, right? So, okay. Runes Mastery is, first, third, fourth page is good, then I'm looking at your Masteries. Okay, so your Graves page that you have, I think you should use that for every AD carry, besides Vayne. Yeah, it's page number six. Yeah, page number six is the best page for all AD carries. So just, yeah, just use that one. Um, yeah, your Caitlyn page and your, it's not, it's not as, it's not going to be as good as the Graves page that you have right here. This is the perfect page you should always use. Um, okay, now extending. Let's talk about um, what do you think you generally are good at and what do you think are, you're, you generally are bad at? Like, I want your input on this. Thanks. Okay. Um, do you have problems with trading, CSing, any of those like basics right now? Oh. You mean twenty minutes? You mean twenty minutes? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna. Some games are like that. Ah, not really. I think you should always maintain a good amount of CS. Like some games, um, optimally, what I want you to be able to do by the end of this lesson, or by however what any more we do, like by the, you should be able to. By ten minutes, you should have eighty to ninety CS. 80 to 100 CS. 100 if it's, if it's like you're just playing perfectly. 80 is if like you're trading well. You should never have like 40 CS by like 10 minutes, I'd say. Otherwise, like some something's happening that's like wrong. Like even the most like ridiculous games, right, where you fight all the time, still doesn't warrant like having 40 CS, right? It's like, yeah. That might be like a positional or like just like not reading the wave well. Like 
Because, like, I understand sometimes games are just, like, you just fight all the time. But even then, like, you still have, like, at least 70 to 70 or 80 CS by 10 minutes if you're playing optimally. Uh, okay, so... I'm going to... Right here, I want to see how you position and just... I'm going to go in a small 1v1 with you. It's going to be, like, an 80 carry 1v1. Um, I'll... I'll Try to refrain from like level two all inning you and stuff because that's not how bot lane works. But well, like in one v one at least. Uh, so. uh, I think we should both play Graves because Graves is a, as a champion. Like we can both play Caitlyn, I guess. But I think Graves is a. Ch okay. Yeah. I think you, I think we should both play. I think we should both play Graves because it would be the easiest way to. Show you like how yeah, to like man, do basic walking. things like um, weaving in auto attacks with your abilities and whatnot. So, so while while we're in this, I'll talk to you about other things because this is going to take like three minutes or so. I want to use the time optimally. Um, also, going to give you a CSing exercise. I'm not going to give you anything, but I'm going to recommend you like you do ten minutes every day, um, even more if you want to. You go in a custom game and you just CS the minions. You should aim for the max you can get is I think 114 by 10 minutes. Now I want you to get 90 or 100 by 10 minutes, and you just auto you never you just auto attack when it's um you auto attack the minion when it's low health and never like you you basically when it's like you only auto attack to get the CS basically is what I'm saying. Don't use abilities and then I want you to also stay in the max range. Now you obviously don't have to memorize this. I'm giving you all this information on a notepad later. Uh, after I write this down, and then just like go back and look at it. Okay, so going bot lane. Yeah. That's that's fine, honestly. But like, it, it seems now that you. It seems now that you like you want well you're taking a lesson from me so you obviously want to improve at the fastest time possible and I will be able to do that with you you just have to like obviously have an open mind to everything I'm saying and try to soak up all the information what are you playing okay It's good to have that mentality. Um, I'm right now. I'm like rank seven, right? Like I'm pretty high up in solo queue. So, but like, how I think about it is like I am like a pretty good mechanical player. Like I can like face LCS pros and like go even or even go ahead. But how I think I gain more ELO is just like doing the right things at the right time. Just like map awareness. Like I'm not like a mechanical god, right? I'm just like. I do I I do the correct decision and like normally it gets an advantage that way. So uh okay. So yep. So we'll start one rewarding. So right here, I'm gonna hit two. So just be careful. Like, I don't want to like randomly surprise you because that's not how like you're gonna hit two soon. So as soon as you hit two, I'll try to play more aggressive. Okay. Okay.
Okay. We should we should continue, but um, overall, I think like you're doing pretty well. Most most players like that. I I have a lot of silver students. Most players like just like die by this level. And they don't like trade well. But you you seem to grasp the core concepts of AD very well, which is good. Okay. Good that I just wanted to see if you would heal that, which is good. I also uh, Q flash that so it'd be very instantaneous. It's good that you healed that. What are you playing? Okay. Okay, oh okay. yeah, it doesn't matter. That dive didn't matter. But um <laughs> overall I think you played pretty well. Um that was a good flash by the way. But uh Okay, so let's go down bot again, and I want to just quickly show you just certain things. Okay, so right there, I think you actually played that very well. Um, overall, you traded well. You didn't. A lot of people don't understand like how how to like. You can't just take free damage, right? Especially in a one v one, like it, it's just like it heightens it even more. But you just can't take free damage, and that's like one of the most important things to know in bot lane is. If you take free damage, it's just like you're just losing the lane in and of itself if that happens. So it's good that you're returning damage that way. I got no time to get yeah, especially as a Caitlyn player, you probably understand that. Um, now, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a very. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to. I'm gonna show I'm gonna explain the CSing exercise, even though it's pretty self-explanatory already. But I'm gonna show you why the why it's so significant, right? Yeah. Um, okay. First, I'm gonna show you something like just general tra trading on um any AD champion. You wanna use it, you wanna weave in abilities with your auto attacks. Now, how you did it was you Q and then you auto attacked, right? Now that I feel like that's not it. Why well, I, I know that it's not that's not as effective as auto attacking first because if you auto attack first. You're kind of you're kind of getting rid of the it's hard to explain but you're getting the rid of your delay of your next auto attack through your ability in a way so like when I go up to trade yeah 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 exactly it's better to do that than like if I I'm gonna explain to you what you did what you did was Q auto attack right it's better to yeah it's better to first get the auto attack down and then get your ability. It's the same thing with like ult, right? So like I'm gonna do this towards you, like auto ult, or like Q auto attack. Like it's it's almost it's yeah, exactly. It's almost always better to do that. That's how you do like yeah, yeah. Even with like smoke bomb, right? If you do like smoke bomb, like I'll do that on this creep. It's better to do that than smoke bomb auto attack. Just generally, like almost always, like almost always. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll write that down on the notepad while I have time. Almost always better. And this is for like every character in the game. You want to weave in auto attacks with your abilities. Like when you play Maokai, right? You can't. When you W onto someone, you want to W auto attack Q auto attack. That's how you do the maximum amount of damage. And that's just how you win trades. This is just tra trading 101, you know? One of the things, like I was trying to play NAR, and one of the things I was like analyzing Korean players and how they played them, NAR, and how. And what one of the fundamental things I was doing wrong was when I was in Mega NAR. You're supposed to W auto attack Q auto attack. You have 
weaving in auto attacks with your abilities is very important no matter what champion you're playing. Or even if you're just clearing jungle camps or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's just a small tidbit. Um, definitely try to practice that. Also, I'm going to explain to you the... Because optimally how you want to do it is you want to do it very fast. So let's go in the river so I can quickly show you this. So like just st just stay st still there. Um, I'm gonna try to walk up to you and then auto queue back away. This is like the standard trading when you're playing Corky, Lucian, Graves, any of those characters, right? You want to do this. This is a standard harassment combo. You walk up and then you back away fast. You want as soon as the queue comes, you want to back away as soon as possible. So just try that on me. Walk up, queue, auto attack queue, back away. Yeah, that was good. Honestly, might have been a little delayed, but. Most people can't even do that, and it, it's good to know that you, you have the fundamentals there. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show, my flash just came up, so I just want to show you like a small thing. Like, You know about R flashing and Q flashing, right? Have you ever seen a Shen taunt, taunt then flash onto someone? Yeah. You can do that on almost every... Almost every champion in the game has something like that. Graves has two, three things. You can flash, Q flash, W flash, or R flash. So what I want you to do is, okay, I'm going to be right here. I want you to flash and then ult me. You see how there was kind of a delay there? Kind of. But like, okay, so just uh, go a little bit forward so I, can, uh, so I can show you the R flash and the main difference between it. So if I do this, it's instantaneous. Yeah, it's instantaneous, right? So if you're playing a... It's less so important on... Caitlyn doesn't really have anything like that. She can R flash, I guess, but it's not really important on Caitlyn. But when you're playing a champion like Graves, like Lucian, like uh, Corky, right? It's, it's a pretty important... Or even when you're playing like Maokai. Like you can Q flash on Maokai. And it's just like another mechanic in the game that you can do to like better like, you know, best your opponent. Yeah, because like if you flash and R someone... It's, there's almost like a pretty good like full second where they can react, right? But if you were to R flash on Graves on someone, there's just like no time to react. It even catches pro uh, pro players like by surprise, and they won't like follow up flash. Um, okay, so I was. Um, now I'm gonna talk to you about the significance of uh, just like utilizing. You probably know this, but um, just utilizing your max range when you're CSing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'll just explain the very easy conceptual component of this mechanic right now. As soon as that happens. So obviously it's really easy, right? If you're if you're Caitlyn or something, and if I CS like this, like I'm of course I'm exaggerating, right? But if I'm CSing like this, it's so easy for you. To it's so easy. But like even like if I'm CSing like this, right? It's still easy to poke me. Because I'm not using the full 550 range. You want to use, like, right here, right? I'm using the full 550 range, and it's much harder to, for you to, like, you know, harass me, poke me down. This this is, like, this is both, like, important for Caitlyn and, like, for almost every, like, 80 champion. You want to, when you're CSing, you want to almost always use your max range as possible. Yeah, auto spacing. Hashtag. Like, you know. Because, like, it's really hard for you to pressure. It's it's not really hard, but it's a lot harder for you to pressure me when I'm using my max range than it is if I'm, like, using 300 range, right? It's, um, it's a very... It's... You can use the circle, but... Eventually, it's like just by instinct. Like I know, like I have to walk up to near my mage creep to hit this mage creep. Like it's just by almost instinct. And this is what I want you to do when you're doing the CSing exercise. Is when you're going for CS, you're just like practicing CSing, right? I want you to stay in max range when getting CS, like this. Just like practicing CSing and you're practicing max range concept. It's a very, it's a double whammy almost. And then you can even extend that by like always orb walking, right? So it's like you're doing three things at once. But obviously take one thing at a time. If you can't like 
if you if you have to practice CSing by just CSing, obviously do that. But yeah. So just like whatever you're comfortable with. Um, not only is it good to like you know, okay, so I'm gonna bend this wave out a bit. Um, it's good so you don't get poked, right? But it's also good to just zone someone. So like, say I'm like I have a BF sword and you have a pickaxe, right? How I wanna, okay, so I'm gonna back out here. How I wanna zone you is I wanna use my max range and hit the minion backwards while zoning you, right? So if you're here, I'll just like cue you. But I'm zoning you too. This is my max zoning area. So I'm not only is max range the concept in and of itself good for you know like um, say you have the lane frozen, right? You can zone people better because you you can zone them more farther and then shoot backwards, and you can you know um, you won't get poked as much. So it's like a double thing, it's, and it's why it's so important. So definitely. Especially on Caitlyn, it is so important on Caitlyn. It's pretty much her entire champion. It's just like abusing, abusing your max range so you can um, better harass the enemy opponent. So yeah, definitely practice that max range along with your, you know, um, uh, what's gonna call it? CSing and uh, orb walking. Okay. So yep, yeah, that was that was pretty much that. Um, okay. So I'm going to write that all down, so... <sighs> okay. okay, so just wave manipulation. Yeah, I can, I can definitely help you with that. Um... Yeah, exactly. When you freeze and Okay. So I'll explain the freezing concept right now, um, and why it's so good. First of all, you can't just freeze willy-nilly, right? Like, I can't just be like, I'm gonna freeze the lane right now! Like, you have to I first identify freezing conditions, right? So like, right here, I can freeze the lane. If I were to do so, it'd be like a pretty shit freeze, but like I could freeze it. You can only freeze the wave when you have more, when the enemy has more minions. I'd say like two or th at least two or three more minions than than uh, than what you have. Yeah, and how you freeze is you obviously just CS the minion as low as it can be. So like this CS, like you want to almost CS it when it has like one HP almost. Obviously, like pretty hard sometimes but like you know and what this is good for right so I want to push this in first so I can best show you it okay so right here you could freeze a lane although you probably shouldn't because there's so many but like if you were ahead you uh let, let it hit the tower actually so it can um oh wait I just recalled for no reason what the fuck <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, so what I want you to do is I, I want you to like kill the first three minions in my next wave and then just like sit in the bush and watch me why freezing is good and how how to do it. So first first step, identified freezing. I can freeze this wave because you have more minions than me. So what how to you probably know how to freeze it, but I just want to reiterate just in case like you're a little confused and I want you to be able to 100% know it. So I want this minion wave to not hit my tower. So I tank it a bit and then go to the bush. Why you freeze it is because you want the minion wave near your tower and you want... You almost always want to do it when you're ahead of the enemy champion. So say you, I have a BF sword and you have like a pickaxe, right? Now, and if my support's head and you killed your enemy laner and they can't go... They can't be where you are right now, right? If they're behind. Because you're just going to kill them and zone them, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is why you want to freeze. And you always want to be like... Because freezing is a very good thing to do when you are ahead. So you can snowball that advantage. So if I'm ahead, right? And I'm the wave is here. You have to be really close to the minion wave to CS. And to even get EXP. Like, you have to be, like, near your mage creeps. 
And if I'm strong enough to just zone you away, right? Like pretend I'm strong enough. Wow, I'm so strong, right? Like you can't you can't CS. You just can't CS. And that's why that's how you snowball an advantage and why it's so good. Um also it's not it's not just when you're behind, right? So Okay, I'm gonna if you're behind, you want to freeze the. You want to. You want to obviously keep it at the tower, so you so you don't have to overextend, right? And like, you don't you don't have to overextend and like you know just die randomly. That's fine. Yeah, you just have to identify when's a good time. Like, when is a bad time to freeze? When like you're there's team fighting, like right? Like you're in the team fight stage. You shouldn't. You probably shouldn't be freezing, right? Because when you freeze, you're just gonna be focusing on CSing, and you're not gonna roam or anything, right? So, when you're when it's like a team fight phase, right? Like, say dragons coming up, you don't want to freeze the lane then, right? Like, say dragons coming up and your team wants needs you to be there because you are so strong. You have to push the lane and then you have to help them out on dragon. You can't, you know, you can't just like freeze the lane like this, you know, don't help them at all, and then they just lose four v five, and then you just lose the game, right? That's counterproductive. So, you obviously want to tell by what's happening in the game and just based on how, how the game is going that's what when you want to freeze and when you don't want to freeze yeah exactly or just like even just slow push it just like if i so yeah like I'll, i'm gonna do a just just don't see us right here i'm gonna show you like a way to slow push this so by slow pushing i kill the first two minions okay and then I just don't, and then I only hit, I only hit them small. I only hit it when they're about to die. So it's pushing towards you, but very slowly. So this is a slow push, right? Like my minions are, I still have more minions, and I'm still going to slow push it. But you can still zone someone by slow pushing it, because it immediately doesn't go to their tower, right? You, I can still zone you a bit, just not as much as freezing. But the key difference is, like, if I slow push it, I... I'm still denying and zoning, right? But I have the freedom. Like, say I need to go to Dragon right now. I have the freedom to do it. So this is why slow pushing is good sometimes. You just have to identify what you have to do in the lane. And it's not like... Obviously, there's always a cookie-cutter thing to do, right? You, ha you should freeze the lane based on these factors. You should... But I can't, like, always... Sometimes, like, it's based on the interpretation of how you want to play the game. And based on a lot of factors, I, I can't just always tell you, this is the correct time to do this, right? It's like, obviously, a yeah, it's obviously a dynamic thing, right? So, um, so okay. So, that was, that was good. I, I talked to you about, uh, just give me a sec. I'll actually want to write this down for you. So, okay. Okay. Went to... Oh, that, that's good. No, that's fine. When to freeze? Um, when to freeze? Hard push, uh, slow push, based on how the game is going and how you want to play the game, basically. Um, dynamic, dynamic concept. Freezing. Enemy has more minions. Don't let the minions get to the tower. Uh, that's basically it. only hit only hit the minions when they are low. Uh, slow pushing. Kill the first two minions in a wave, and let it slowly push. Good for um denying while still be able to roam. Uh, slow pushing, fast pushing. Fast pushing, hard pushing, good kill minions as fast as possible, good when you need to recall or the enemy just did. So I'll put in a flash Q, flash R, many champions. Okay. Oh, my hands hurt. Ugh. Okay. Um. 
Okay. That's good. I, uh... Okay, so I explained that concept to you. It's good to know about wave control and everything. Um, okay. I think I, I think I explained a lot. There's one last concept I want to explain to you, and then we'll go into the replay. I'm sure there's more concepts, but, like, this is just, like, the one that, um, that I think, like, is the most important right now. Okay, so... Let's actually, uh, yeah, let's let's stay here. Um, so ward this bush that I'm in. I'm gonna talk to you about support. Oh, fuck this mini wave. I'm gonna talk to you about support because when you're playing solo key, right? You're gonna have a random support with you. Most of the time, most of the time, you're not gonna have a voice com of what to do and like how your your support is thinking. So it's like not a psychic thing, right? So how you wanna so, so how Tell me, tell me, what do you think? If I were here, where should you be? If say I was a, no, if I was, if I was a, if I was your Annie support, right? Where would? You... Okay, so what I would suggest you do, and this is almost applies to every support besides Soraka, because Soraka always wants to stand behind you, right? What you want to do, so you can still see me. So okay, I'm not gonna be in the bush. So I'm right here. You want to be parallel to me at all times. So if I'm like, if I'm like here, right, you, sh you shouldn't be up there. You, sh you should be parallel to me, basically. Now, sometimes your support's retarded, right, and they just don't do that. But just be aware, like, if we're not parallel, like, say I want to go in, right? Don't Just don't move for a second. Say I want to go in, I'm Annie, right? I'm walking in. Bam, I'm stunning someone, right? And you're there, and you're there, and, like, not following up. And you have to dash to, like, follow up, right? That's just a positional error on your end. And it's a waste of ability because, say, like you get them really low and you didn't have to use your E, right? And you and you use your E for to just to follow up. That's just a miss kill opportunity because you could have got them. Um, can, uh, inversely, right? So say like I'm I'm right right here, right? I'm Annie. I'm I'm being I'm your retarded support, and they just go on you, right? You're I can't follow up. You're gonna get focused, and you're we're, you're probably still gonna lose a team too. But, yeah, yeah. Let's settle the score. Yeah, and then it's just like, it's just like a fucking clusterfuck. You know? Like, <laughs> so, so, but like, optimally, this is what we have to do optimally. If I'm Annie, and you're Graves, I walk up, you walk up with me, stun, you, you don't even, you don't even have to dash. You can just literally QR auto attack. And then if they flash or something, you can then dash, kill, and then do that stuff, right? So, this is every support in the game you want, besides Soraka. Because if I'm Soraka, I'm like, I'm going to be a little bitch, right? Like, I don't want to get hit ever. But, um, yeah. Bes every support besides Soraka, you want to be parallel to your parallel to them. Because if you're not, if you're too far ahead, they're gonna, you're going to get focused and your support won't, you know, react. But if you're farther back, I mean, if you're... If you're farther back and your support's too far up, then your support's gonna go in or use a cooldown and you won't be able to follow up. Yeah. Um, obviously your support's not always gonna do the right thing. If you see, like, if I'm, like, CSing like this, right, and you are you see, like, an opportunity, like, you have to weigh the opportunity. Say they have a Leona, right, and if you go for their harassment, she's just going to go on you, and your support is not following up. Then you're going to, then that's obviously not worth it, right? But, like, say you're playing Caitlyn, most Caitlyn, like, auto-spacing, like, oh, God, I fucking hate that term, but, like, just, like, how, like, you know, how, um, how you, like, harass someone with, uh, when they're getting a CS, right? Most of the time, that's really safe, and you don't have to worry about your support positioning, right? So if I see, say I'm playing Caitlyn, I see you getting a CS, I can just do like, I can just do a small auto attack back away, you know? And if you don't get harassed, that's that's fine. That's a good thing to do. Okay, so okay, talking about parallel positioning.
parallel. Uh-huh. Okay. Um obviously I'm not I'm not telling you any anything about team fighting. But in my in my opinion right now um not right now but like just in general team uh laning is like the most important thing about this game. Um especially not not in this game but in solo queue definitely, right? Like if you just win off laning phase like you'll have a better percentage to win than if I were to tell you like how to best team fight, you know? Like, if you're just an item behind because you had a shitty lane phase, like, you can be the best team fighter in the game. You still, like, won't do shit, you know? So, so, laning is obviously the most important. I just want to, you know, highlight these facts before I go, uh, go into other things, you know? Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah. To your support, if you are too ahead, you will get focused. If your support is too ahead, he, she will engage and you won't be able to follow up in time. Okay. Okay. Um. Honestly, I think I... I'll go over one more thing. Um. No, not even going over. It's just a very small thing. You want to know the max range of your abilities in game, because most of the time you're not gonna hit someone with like, say you're playing Caitlyn, right? You're not gonna like hit someone like melee range with your Q. Most of the time it's gonna be at the end range, so you always want to know how far and just like your range indicators, right? How far you can hit someone, how far you can be while still hitting someone. So for Graves Q is a very deceptive thing, right? So I want to like, I want to be in the ma max range. So I think this, this is the max range. And it's a very important thing to to know, because whether you're playing like any champion in the game, right? Like when I'm playing like Annie, right? I'm never gonna be able to just like melee range like Q you, right? Most of the time in high yellow, especially because her W has like a very like one of the many like really good Annie's supports in the game, W has like a 20 range difference, right? And most of the time they're gonna like, you know, hit you with the end of the range of the W to stun you rather than hitting you with Q. So it not only opens up like more avenues of just like when you can harass, right? And when you can do these things, but it also just, it's just for just general play, like whether you're playing Maokai, whether you're playing anything in the game. Um, so I also, so like, just show me like where do you think you the max range of your Q is. And just do it. Obviously it's really hard. So obviously you wanna you wanna ad adapt to that, right? You wanna everything everything that you wanna try to do should be off instinct. Because like when I'm like playing League, right? And I'm playing Graves, say I'm playing AD carry for some weird reason. Um I don't want to be like I don't want to be like looking at this tooltip while like walking towards you and like oh this is the this is the range right like you want to have it by instinct and yeah exactly so you obviously while you're in game you want to know the max range of both your abilities and your um, auto attacks okay so let's get out of this game I'm gonna finally look at your replay take my own notes and I'm obviously going to show try to see what is wh why do you what's like your biggest problems basically um um do you have do you have youtube do you have youtube is it on youtube okay um no i i think we can just um i think we can just you know yeah, based on the time, and then when I pause, you actually, no, yeah, pausing it is good. Okay, so, ready, set, starting. Okay, this is just, I want to just be in game, right here. Holy moly, this quality, though. Oh, is that 144p? <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but I said it. I said it back. Okay, so I'm at. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got it to work. Don't worry. Okay, so the so the game. I actually want to look at their team comp first. So one year in loading screen. Okay, so I'm just looking at loading screen right now and looking at your team comp versus their team comp. So okay, so your team comp obviously sucks. It's pretty terrible, but honestly, that doesn't really matter that much at all. Okay, so right here, you should. There's three things. Three things you want to do in loading screen. Look at your bot lane. Look at the bot lane matchup. Um, look at both team comps. Figure out your item pack, your item build, um, and how it. Your figure out your item builds and like how I didn't talk to you about item builds, but I'm assuming like it's very static, so I don't think you would have a problem with that. But figure out your item build and how you should build into the game. So, okay. So, I'm going to do a short, just, you know, um, like, I'll do it with you, you know. I'll do these three things very fast with you. So, bot lane matchup. You have a LeBlanc support? Oh, that's terrible. Okay. Okay, so you have a LeBlanc support and your verse Jinx Thresh. So right on the right at the bat, right? Right at the bat. You want to figure out win condition of of the lane and what's the best what's the best thing that can happen for you to win lane, to win and lose lane basically. So you lose lane basically by taking too much jinx poke. Because she has a very long range with Rocket, right? By taking too much Jinx poke, slash not returning damage, and getting hooked, or or focused by Thresh. Inversely, you win lane by um, poking with your Q and using the auto attack Q trick onto their support and eight or AD carry. Um, or if LeBlanc makes a play with chains. So this is like, you almost want to, you have a lot of time before the game actually, or the lane actually starts, and you want to, you want to just conceptualize your win conditions. So this is not only a thing with bot lane, well, it's a thing for bot lane, but how I use it, I, I use it mostly for top lane, right? Because top lane's more about that style, right? You, it's about, um... Some care when you should go in, when when you're stronger than the enemy, what levels would be good, you know, all of those big things. But for bot lane, it's it's the same. Say you're versus Callista, right? And you're playing Graves. You can bank on the fact that you'll have a stronger level six than Callista. So you can bank on the fact, like if even if you're just even with Callista, you will have an advantage at level six, and you should you and you should um you know. Do it based on that. Like, just know how, like, the matchup plays out. You want to look at both team comps. Um, they have a lot of magic damage. And you might want to build QSS. Also, you want to avoid... Basically, you want to avoid Thresh, Mal's, Cho'Gath in team fights, As they have very good... CC that can lock you down. Now item build, right? You obviously almost always want to build IE, Shiv, Shiv or PD second. But after that, you can build either QSS or um, BT. Now do you have a question whether to go BT or Last Whisper second usually? But it will Okay, so First this team first this team comp you should definitely get BT second almost always. And the reason being is um BT is a lot better for squishier teams. You'll do more damage with BT. You'll have you'll do more dam 
you'll do probably the same amount of damage, but, like, the biggest thing is, like, if you have BT, you have, like, a 250 damage shield, right? And that is so important versus, like, Vladimir, Malzahar, Cho'Gath, right? Just, like, it's so important, especially versus burst casters, to have that little leeway from that shield, right? Um, so, you should build BT when they, they're squishier teams. You'll have more sustain, uh, a little bit more damage, and uh, survivability, which is a very important thing. Um, you should build Lost Whisper when the enemy has two, two or more tanks. It's usually two tanks, but if they have a tanky jungler and a tanky top lane, then you build Lost Whisper. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, I gave you three things of what you should do almost in just a loading screen. So it's a very, you know, important thing to do. So I'm going to unpause it. I'm going to go to nine. I'm just going to. Yeah, I'm going to go in 1001 right here. So you there? Uh, okay, starting it now. So, game starting. That's good. That's a good combo to do. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to point that out, but it didn't matter. And it didn't matter because Jinx is not exploiting it, but a higher level player would definitely exploit you not using the max range there. Also, you should use the auto attack Q thing more often. That was a good auto attack Q. You could have did it faster, though, but yeah. Generally, you're playing this lane very well so far. Okay, your wonks get... Okay, so I'm going to pause that right there. And go back, like, I'm going to go back to 10... 40-ish. I'm going to go back to 1040-ish, and then I'm going to pause. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to pause at 1056. Okay, you see the scenario where you're obviously playing fine, but your support's just walking up to the bush. And you see this parallel positioning thing, right? Like, honestly, I think you could have parallel positioned here. But this is exactly why you lose this trade. And why, I don't know if LeBlanc dies or not, but she can easily die here, right? So, 1056, you are way, like, CSing here. Your support gets caught. You can't, you can't do anything, right? You don't even have your E. You can't even do anything. So this is like a parallel positioning thing here. So uh, try to Q auto attack more, uh, auto Q more, stay max range. Also, what I want you to try to do more is on odd on odd level. I don't know how often you play Graves, but or Lucian or like any of those characters, but uh, but on Graves particular. On odd level, on your odd levels, basically, basically when you level up Q, try to be try to be aggressive, and go for the combo of auto attack Q, auto attack back away. Try to do that when you're um when you're level one. Just think of um. Here's how I tell my uh my students like how to think of their mana bar. And I, I fucking should have told you this before, but I, I just remembered it. So I'm going to go go over mana bar usage. So this is how you should manage your mana. You should use your, ma you, use your mana enough to harass them down, but you want to have enough mana to use all of your abilities for an all-in. Does that make sense? So for you right here, your Q costs 80 mana. 
now this this doesn't really work for level one, but I'm just trying to like this is like I'm gonna tr I'm trying to tell you like things like this. Um, say you have your say you're level six and you have 300 mana. Of course you don't have 300 mana, but I'm just telling you about uh <laughs> using these numbers, right? Your ult costs 100, your E costs 40, your Q costs 80. What does that up to add up to? It's uh 220. So you want to have your mana by the 220 number. So if you have three, so you have, if you have max mana, 380 mana right here, you want to use your mana to get damage onto the opponent, but you want to have like 220 mana so you can all in them. Does that make sense? Um, and you want to think, yeah, think of your mana as a as a as Think of your mana and your usage of mana as a deduction of the enemy's HP, because because you never because you never want to use it for like CS for easy CSing, right? You almost always want to use it against the enemy, whether you're playing Caitlyn, whether you're playing Graves or something. Okay, so now that I talked about mana, let's go over 1056. Why why this is so shitty, right? So. There's two things you could do at 1056, and this is why this happens. Um, you either have to be parallel. In this scenario, I think you could be parallel with Fulblanc. And when she gets hooked, you can fight, right? You can just like fight, and you will be. You you will probably lose the fight, but you'll lose it like less so because right here, Jinx isn't really parallel to Thresh. She kind of is, but she's not. You're just really not parallel to, to LeBlanc. So if you're like super parallel right here, you can win this trade. Just just realize like if you're engaging with someone, unless you super hardcore fuck up, if you're engaging and you're parallel, you will probably win the trade like nine times out of ten against silver players because they just don't know how to position correctly. Does that make sense? So just try to like stay parallel. Um in this scenario, you can't. You either have to be parallel with Fulbank, or you have to ping her back. Communic communicate with your support on general on where how to position. So like on bad scenarios, right? And your support's just like walking forward for no reason. Tell her to back. Like it's okay. Like you don't have to always just, you know, jump off the cliff with your support. You know, but. You just have to still communicate that fact. Okay, so I don't know how this plays out, but I'm going to unpause it now. Okay, she she doesn't W back. She probably maybe dies here. No, Thresh flashes ignites. You can Eve. You can E here. Huh? Huh? Okay, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to back out of that. And I'm going to okay. Let's let's go over this from 1057 again. So just go back to 1057, and we'll I'll unpause it. As soon as you're ready. Okay. So I'm gonna pause at crucial times. So right right there you missed your cue, but it's whatever. Right here I'm at 1102. Right here. I don't think you do this, and the reason being is you click the E right there. But you want to level up your abilities with a, a keyboard shortcut. Do you, you 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 don't do that, right? Okay. So definitely try to um, incorporate this. Try to incorporate using keyboard shortcuts to level up your ability. Um, what I do is I press Control E. What I do. Is I press Control E and to level up Control Ability uh, uh, button. Okay. Why this is so important is as soon as you got level two, I'm at 11:02 by the way. Are you there? As soon as you get you, as soon as you turn level two, you should have keyboard shortcut Control E E into the bush, kill Thresh. Does that make sense? And you don't have to back off here. You backed off a bit when you could have just walked forward. You know. Okay, so now I'm going to unpause it. So right there, you backed a little. That was bad. Like, you, you, you use your E, like, 
you definitely could have killed Thresh there. And you killed Jinx instead, but you definitely could have killed them both. And that flash was a little scary, but... Um, and then you're... Yeah, okay. 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 So right there, leveling up your E and dashing immediately would have netted you both kills. You also could have... um. Yeah, it, that's the only thing you could have done. You could have got both kills. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially intense level uh, all-in scenarios like that. You also walked back a little, so... Don't know how I should phrase that, but just, like, try to identify situations better. You're level 2, you just turned level 2. There's no way, like, they can do anything to you, right? You shit on them. Right here, you're in a pretty shitty situation. Oh, no, you have Shaco. Oh, not bad. So right here, I would have... Oh. Okay. That's a that's a kill. Okay. So right here, you would back... I mean, push this and then back. You want to use your Q here. Okay, you, you did. You did it. Okay, and then you back. Just back. I'm gonna pause it here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about. Uh, whew, um, why you missed like a couple key CS there, and it doesn't matter in this game that much. But I want to talk to you about the significance of CS, especially in the realm of bot lane. So if you miss like five easy CS right there, like what how you just kind of did, you miss like seven or so CS easily, like that you could have gotten. And that translates to you not buying a BF sword and buying a pickaxe, like, long sword instead. It fundamentally changes the game, like, drastically. And this is why I emphasize CSing and why it's so important as a whole. Is because if you, you know, just like, if you don't CS, like, if you don't, if you miss too much CS, you're going to not be able to trade next back. And, like, your second back, if you don't have enough gold, you'll have, like, weird items, right? So, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is why I emphasize the first back so so heavily and why you should try to get the BF sword first. Because if you get BF sword first, uh, if you get pickaxe first back, right, that means you have to get 1,600 gold on your second back, which is, like, very unlikely unless, like, a fucking, like, a clusterfuck happens and you get a lot of kills. It's very unlikely to get that next power spike. But if you get BF Sword first, which is very doable, you can back second and then get your pickaxe and, like, you'll you'll have, like, your power, like, levels, right, won't be so awkward. So this is why CSing is so important. So, 21, 20, 1241. Oh, what are you doing here? Okay, this is really greedy. You probably could have done this. You probably could have done done this. Actually, it's not that bad. Especially since they're not. Especially since they're not freezing, it's okay. But usually, you shouldn't be allowed. So right here, I would just Q for the cannon almost. Uh, okay, as long as you get the cannon, it's okay. Yeah, right here, like you want to identify like what's happening, right? You you're not gonna. Um, oh God, what was that? Okay, so um, I'm gonna pause there. That was really dangerous. Um, you have to f identify certain stages of the game, right? So far, Jinx has two backs or one back, and you have zero backs. There's no way you can trade. Don't even go for the trade. Just go for the CSing. Don't be in that area where if Thresh was a god and just predicted that, Dash, he could have probably killed you, and you would have been in a really shitty situation. So you want to identify, like, you don't even want to give him, like, opportunities, right, to be a god. Like, sure, they're silver players, but, like, you don't want to give them opportunities, and right there, you gave him an opportunity by just, like, not 
you're like you could have queued for the C queued for the cannon creep and then backed and then CS under tower. Then after you CS under tower, then you back for your BF sword. Doing that play and what I just said gives them zero opportunities to do anything and to punish you for um, staying for BF sword, right? But you right there when you like dash to the side, right? That gave him that gave him a couple of opportunities and it chunked you a little bit. So they could even dive you, like, or something, right? And it's just, like, unnecessary damage and unnecessary risks you're taking. So I'm going to unpause it, right? 13.33, unpausing it. Oh, God. That was unfortunate. You could have killed him if you had your queue up. But it's whatever. So right here you want to identify you should only CS and then once you once the CS hits your tower, then you CS it under tower and then you immediately back. Oh my god, this is so bad. This is so awkward. Because now it's pushing and then they can freeze it. It's good Shaco's coming down. Now you want to play more up, actually, because you have Shaco. Cause you wanna you see that LeBlanc? Like you just did in um You didn't, uh, what's gonna call it? We were in parallel with LeBlanc, especially with the Shaco gank. So when she chained, you didn't auto, you could have got like three auto attacks, right? When she got the chain down. Right here, I would stay for the wave. I don't know why you're backing. Uh, stay for the wave, please. Stay. 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 Oh, okay. Okay, I'll pause there. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back like 10 seconds to. To where you didn't okay so 1443 this is where I'm at okay you see Cho'Gath you just killed Thresh mount top lane just backed to mid mid still mid you have LeBlanc it's 2v1 even if she was even if she was level five she still can't do anything she's level three here by the way but like even just Oh. Yeah, because you're level 5 and you've been shitting for the whole game. There's no reason to do it. So. Or like a zap, I guess. Even a zap wouldn't kill you. She would have to auto-attack you twice and zap you. And that'd be impossible to do if you were to max range CS with LeBlanc. Like, if it was just you, you should back here. But you have LeBlanc here. Jinx can't do shit. You stay for this extra... How much gold is it? 120 gold. You could maybe get, like, another item or something. Or just, like... The EXP is good in general. So I'm going to unpause it. Should have stayed for this wave. BF Sword. I'm going to talk to you about item builds. I'm not going to pause it though. Um, as of right now. As of right now. Uh, I'm gonna write 1505, stay away. As of right now, Ghostblade isn't that good because of Cinder Hulk. Um, I would not go Ghostblade because it severely deducts your damage to what it could be if you had Shiv. Avoid Ghostblade. Unless they have unless they have a Shaco jungle and no tank, right? Then you can't go then you can go Ghostblade. Even then, it wouldn't be as good as Shiv, but then it would be, like, kind of okay. So you should stop her B. That's good. So what's going to happen here is... Unless you can't dive Jinx, you fast-pushed it, and there was no... Actually, you're, you're zoning. But there should always be a method to what you're doing, right? Kind of a method to your, to mad, to your madness, right? So, uh, if, you're, if you're fast pushing, you have to either dive her or she has to be backed. Because instead of this, you have to dive her here, I'd say. Or else it's not worth... Because right here, you gave, you gave Jinx a lot of farm. 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna back like twenty seconds to before you fast push this. Okay, yeah, you could have froze it on her. Okay, so at fifteen or you can even okay, fifteen forty four, right? Are you there? Okay, so fit yeah, no, no, I'm I'm saying are you at fifteen forty four? Because this is before, this is the state of the lane before you fast pushed it. You could have froze it here. You could have froze it here. You could have slow pushed it here. But the best thing for you to do here was stop a recall, like what you just did, and freeze the wave. And use max range zoning um, spacing. And then, yeah, exactly. So... You also, okay, also here, what you could have done was, you see Thresh mid, you're probably not noticing, like, the little nuances, right? But you see, th you see Thresh mid, right? And if I were you, and I saw Thresh mid, I would say, I would hard push this, and then dive her immediately, before Thresh got back. So, so, so what I would have done here was, I would have pinged Jinx, said, assist me on the wave, hard pushed it, then dove her immediately. But seeing that you did none of those and you hard pushed it anyway, it's a it's not something you're you're not snowballing an advantage. You're giving her a way to come back in the game when you're ahead like this, right? Okay. She has a Doran's Blade and a ward, like you there's just no way she can do anything, right? So But you still managed to give her like twelve CS or about. Um when you could have denied that, or you could have den or you could have dove her, which could have denied her as well. So, yeah, right here she's playing too safe to dive, but so the best thing to do definitely was to freeze. 16, 16. And I just paused it there. 15, 30 to 16, 16. Definitely freeze. Um, try to identify what's the best thing to do. Obviously, it's like hindsight, right? But like one of the hardest things to learn about this game, because unless you're making a blatant mistake, right, it's really hard to tell, like, was pushing this bad, right? Like, you probably, while w watching that, like, like it took me like a bit of time, right, right, to like identify that was a mistake. And that's why, like, I think, like, that's why I think coaching is good in general. It's like, it's very hard to, like, Identify that that was a mistake, you know, you have to um, You have to like have someone like tell you like these things that you're not seeing and that's why it's um, I'm gonna unpause. I'm gonna unpause it here 1620 now Also, don't use your smoke bomb on graves in lane. No, never in lane. Unless you're going for an, unless you're an, unless you're all inning them and you need the slow. But like when you when you W thresh like that under tower, right? That didn't really do anything, and it lowered your mana bar. That could have been a Q, right? Because they cost the same amount of mana, but Q does three times as much damage. So it's just like you know inefficient use. This is really good, what you're doing. You're using max range zoning. Before you were, at least. Right here, I would try to go for an auto attack Q, especially since Jinx has nothing. Um, I would avoid using dash like that. Yeah, because what you could have done there was actually you could have just walked up and auto queued her, auto queued Thresh without using dash. Yeah, dash forward or you know like anything. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to pause it here. Um, I think I'm going to stop looking at the lane phase and I'm going to go over the team fighting. Because we are a bit over time, which I don't mind. But So I want to just like look at the team fighting and then... Because I also have scrims in like 20 minutes, so I don't like really have that much time. And I haven't eaten, you know. So, um, okay. So let's go over just... How to use abilities before we go into team fights. You're using QL. Basically, you're using QL. I'm not going to say anything, but try to but try to do walk up, auto attack, Q combo. I'm reiterating a lot, but uh, for W, don't you don't use it in lane unless going for all in. It's the same mana as Q, but does about three to five times less damage. E, don't use it. Don't use it to how I how I um E or any gap closer in general because they're almost all on E, right? So how to use E in general is you want to use it not you don't. Here's how you don't want to use it. You don't want to use it to accelerate inevitable fight, inevitable like trading or fights. So if you can not. If you can just walk up and auto queue, you shouldn't ever use E. What you should use E on, what you should use E on, is, uh, how, what's gonna call it? Securing kills, gap closing, gap closing or escaping. Um, R, you're using R well. Okay. So, that's just basically the thing. Um, now I'm gonna... I'm gonna scroll over to when the lane phase ends and then where the first team fight happens. Do you know when the first team fight happens? Like 4v4 or 5v5 team fight? Okay, so I'm gonna just go to 24 minutes here. You're you're in mid lane, so. And I like the fact that you bought that warning totem. Really like that. Okay, I'm going to pause here, actually. Your build is really weird. Uh, <laughs> no, no I, just, I just noticed that. I'm like, what? You don't have IE in your two and uh, Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um, okay, so okay, so for almost every AD, you want to finish a vet, an important item. Finish the most core item first. So for Graves, I feel like if you were ahead and you had, I think you could have had IE Avarice Blade here. You would be so strong and not like this strong, you know? Like right now, you don't seem that strong. In comparison to Jinx, you are, but like if you had IE Avarice Blade, you can just shit on everyone in this game. So for Graves, it would be IE first into PD or uh, Shiv. Right here, this this build is uh should avoid doing this. It's okay, but just just know like from. I'm like a, I, I play with challenger ADs, like I play with LCS pros like sneaky double lift all the time. And if they like if they don't do this, then like I don't think you should. <laughs> okay. It's right here you should group. Yeah. Yeah, I love sneaky, so nice. You also want to get boots too, um, before your IE or shit. I didn't, I didn't say that, but yeah, uh, get boots too before PD or shit. Okay, I wrote, I wrote it down.
I.e. Averse Blade Boots 2 is what you want to do. Okay. No, if I, you only get Shiv if you have to get Averse Blade and you can't afford PD. Because what Averse Blade does, right? It it didn't it makes builds less awkward, right? Does that make sense? Do you see Sneaky doing this all the time? Probably he goes if he has to go pickaxe and he can't get the BF sword first item, right? He gets Averse Blade second because it makes his build less awkward. So if you have to get Averse Blade. I'm at 26.13. Okay. But, um, okay, I'm paused it. But if Sneaky, if if you don't have to get Average Blade, you get PD. But if you do, then you get Aver uh, Shiv. Actually, I'll write that down so you don't, so don't forget. No problem, no problem. Avarice Blade first. If you get Avarice Blade, get Shiv. If you don't have to, get P. Okay, what is happening here? Here are kids. Okay, so I'm going to go over like 20 seconds before that. So like you're just walking, walking... To here, you should award it over. Okay, you did. Okay, so you... you Okay, I'm going to pause it at 26.50. So you know, like, five people over there. You just saw Malzahar. You just saw Thresh choke. That's, there's no way you can defend this. You see Ziggs. You see Rumble. I, I'm assuming Shaco's at base. You just give this dirt up. Instead... Okay, yeah, you just walked here and you died. And then you used your dash too, so it's like even the even then you could walk down. I guess no, there's no way you could have done anything here. Yeah, definitely just try to use your abilities before all um before dying. Oh god, do you get BT here? Oh god, you do. <sighs> BT is an okay item to rush sometimes, but just but that's like a very 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 high level thing that you that you probably shouldn't worry about. Um definitely just go with the standard build. It will it'll, it'll benefit you greatly because like certain situations very rarely very rarely in certain situations BT first would be okay, but you know like if you just if you just uh, go standard more often than not you'll you'll be ahead from that or like be better from that you know that was a good rumble. Roll. So right here I W, yep, W. And you use your ulti here, yep. That's really good that you, I like how you're attack, like moving constantly. And you're looking for that last auto attack. Many players would just like have to flash for that. But because you're clicking at him constantly, as soon as you finish your ult and as soon as you're in range, you auto attack him, which is good. You also could have used your ghost blade there. Which is something I shouldn't say because eventually you won't be having to use ghost blade. Because you won't build it, but yeah, definitely just be aware of items you can use. Yeah. Because that was just like a very, like you got the kill in the end, right? But it was a very hit or miss situation. You were in the, you were in the, like even me, like I wouldn't be like, yeah, I'm definitely going to get that lost auto attack and not having to use flash, you know? I'm gonna skip ahead a bit. Seems really. Okay.
I'm actually gonna order some food right now. So I, I have food. Actually, I have mac and cheese that I can make. Okay, the thing just paused. Okay, there we go. What what time was it? Okay, twenty nine oh five. I'm at. I'm at twenty nine seventeen right here. Okay, I'm at twenty nine seventeen. Okay, you see that? Okay, okay, right there. Twenty nine twenty nine. You don't want to use your dash like that. Like b before, what I was saying, right? You don't want to use it to to accelerate the inevitable. Using such weird terms, but like you know, like you know what I mean, right? You don't. Yeah, yeah. Or you could just like you just walk up and then you cue them. Auto instead of using your dash. Your dash does give you attack speed, but you want to use it more of an escape or a utility tool. So you never want to dash it like that. Because right here, like now it's awkward. You can't like really go in. You can't really not go in. So it's good focusing that you did that. You want to, you kind of like went away, right? So I'm going to pause it here. 2945, you went like towards your blue but you weren't like paying attention to the other side. Right here, I don't know if you do get the kill, but you probably could have killed Jinx when she flashed away. Um, you probably could have killed Jinx. I don't know if you kill Thresh here, but if you were there, you definitely could kill Thresh. So I'm unpausing it. You just ult for this Thresh, right? Uh, I wouldn't have flashed that, but okay. Could have used your Ghost Blade there too, but um, okay. Yeah, that that too is just like you want to know what's happening like all across the, the board, right? And just watch like other areas of the fight. That's a fine way use of it. It's not bad. Now back here, yep, that's a good ping. Okay, but I'm gonna accelerate it. I'm gonna go over a bit. I'm gonna go over like one of the last. I want to do highlight one more last thing and then. I'm gonna highlight the end game fight. Whether or not. You win this game, right? Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm going to pause this right here. If you had your best build here, right? I'm at one hour, three minutes. It's just like, I'm just talking about builds and how you should have built this game. After you get your BF sword, you got IE. Then you get PD or Shiv. You go BT, I think, and then you go QSS. Or you get, or you get like QSS and then BT. You definitely needed a QSS this game. There's no way you can... So I'm going to talk to you about the utility of defensive items. You do more... If you if you use defensive items correctly, you will do more damage with a defensive item than if you were to have another offensive item. And the reason being is you can be more aggressive, you can, uh, you can auto-attack and use your health pool in a better way than if you had all the offensive items, right? There's no point in getting six offensive items but you're zoned away from Malzahurl the whole game, right? There's no nothing you can do. But if you had five offensive items and you had a QSS, you can be way you can do way more damage. So here, IE, PD, BT, into Banshee's Veil, vale, into Last Whisper. That is your that is your core build, and that is what you should have got instead of uh. It's it's your it's your decision whether to got go Banshees or QSS. You just have to go either or. QSS is good to cleanse an ult, but Banshee gives you HP and gives you a lot of that stuff, and you don't have to worry about the mechanics of it. I feel like for, um, I'd say like lower level players, I'd say like just like having the Banshee's Veil is a little better because if you're not cleansing the ult like 0.5 seconds like after you get ulted, there's no reason to get QSS, right? Like as soon as you get Mal's ulted, you have to press the QSS as soon as possible. 
you don't yeah like you can't like you can't just be like Mal's ulti for one second and then you press QSS. So if you have trouble with that, just definitely get Banshee's Veil. Eventually you'll be able to like do other things, but I feel like Banshee's Veil QSS is just like such a minor thing that and you can just worry about other things if you're having trouble with it. So I'm pause unpausing it, looking at the last fight. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go like all the way. Okay, so this is where you all die. One hour, four minutes, 23 seconds. Yeah. So right here. I wouldn't have to go play like that or your dash like that. Okay, so right here, it's a bit awkward. There's not much you can do, honestly. Uh, okay, so we're looking at the fight. The fight's to, oh okay. Okay, right, there's nothing you could have done here. Um, obviously you have to play more back, but at this point Jinx just does so much more damage to you. Uh, they have Dragon Five buff. Yeah, there's nothing you could do. Um, you you didn't play it optimally, but like even if you play that, this is like goes hand in hand to like team fighting, right? And snowballing advantage. If you played this fight perfectly and you made no mistakes, you would have lost this anyway. If I play this fight. And I did not make a mistake, I would have lost this fight. There's nothing you could have done here. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't even damage, it was just like, you have, look at your items, you have enough damage. It's just like, you don't have the defensive capabilities to output that damage correctly. Um, um, okay, so I'm going to go over the last build you should do. And then after that, I think we will, we will be done for today. Three minutes overboard, but it's whatever. Um, okay, no problem. Um, IE first. Boots 2. Shiv or PD. Into um, BT or QSS. Into whatever you didn't get before. Into Last Whisper. So I Boots, IE, Boots 2. Um, Shiv, BT or QSS. BT or QSS, Last Whisper. That is six items. And that is what you should have done this game. I think if you did that and you... Yeah, I think if you just honestly just built a little better, you would have um, snowballed your advantages a little better and you would have, uh, you know, been more ahead. So, okay. So with that, I think we are done for today. If you can review this lesson, that would be very beneficial for me and it would mean a lot. Uh, okay, thank you. Um,